in the previous section, we talked about um, specific heat capacity, which involves a mass term, um, and the molar heat capacity, which involves the moles term. And in, th in this section, we want to talk about the heat capacity, and specifically the use of a bomb calorimeter, uh, which is shown here, uh, which will essentially allow us to determine how many calories are in things like food. And in a few minutes, we'll talk about how many um, calories are in a single M&M. &M. We'll actually figure out how many joules are in a um, single M&M &M, uh, when we do that math in a few minutes. But before we do that, let's talk about the device called a bomb calorimeter. So a bomb calorimeter involves using a um, metal bomb, which is essentially like a very strong metal vessel that we put the, uh, in this case, M&M, &M, we're going to put into it. And then we seal it up and we put, fill it with pressurized oxygen. And the flammability of organic things, things that are made out of carbon and hydrogen and stuff like this, is very high in the presence of a strong oxygen atmosphere, a high pressure oxygen atmosphere. So we can use an ignition wire to burn that. But what we do is we take this entire bomb, which is going to contain our M&M um, &M and high pressure oxygen in this case, and we submerge it into this water bath with a stirring motor and a precision thermometer. Then we burn the food and we look at the temperature change of the calorimeter. The increase in temperature of the calorimeter comes from the food. And since it doesn't matter whether you burn the M&M &M in high pressure um, oxygen environment or you eat it, you get the same number of calories out, we can then use this information to label um, the food for how many calories are in M&Ms. Now normally you wouldn't get a single serving of M&Ms isn't one M&M, so the calories are going to be more than in a single M&M because the serving size is bigger than one M&M, but you can get the general idea of this. Now what we need to consider here is though we're going to use the heat capacity and the heat capacity is just um, kilojoules per change in temperature. So there's no amount term because it's for a calorimeter. And in fact, this calorimeter is calibrated by burning something that we know how much energy will be released when we burn it. And in our physical chemistry lab here, we actually do an experiment just like this. So this is a diagram of what a bomb calorimeter looks like. Here is a picture of what a bomb calorimeter might look like. And this is a fairly, uh, fairly sophisticated model, but you have the same idea. You have this metal bomb, which has your food, which um, you put in, you pressurize this with oxygen. You have two electrodes. Those are what are gonna catch the food on fire in the high um, oxygen environment. When this burns, it's gonna heat up. The whole vessel is submerged in water with a, with a precision thermometer. And then we can see the temperature change. So based on the temperature change, we can know how much energy is released when we burn that thing. And what that allows us to do, here we don't have M&M, we have macaroni and cheese, but what that allows us to do is figure out how many calories, in this case, 250 calories in a serving of this. Well, if they burn this in the presence of pure oxygen, we could figure out how many calories there are. So this is um, essentially what we're gonna do here. So what I'd like to do uh, finally is actually do an example of this. And as usual, I'm gonna work it out on a piece of paper as opposed to doing it there. So heat capacity, as opposed to specific heat capacity, which has a mass term or molar heat capacity, which has a moles term, has no amount term because it's for the entire device. So the heat capacity is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of the device, often a calorimeter, by one K or one C. And as you'll recall, a temperature change of K or C is the same since it's a change in temperature. So here's the equation, Q equals C times delta T, where C is the heat capacity in joules per degree C. Sometimes they're in kilojoules uh, per degree C. And Q is the heat usually in kilojoules. So this should probably be kilojoules because that's usually what it is. And delta T is the temperature change. So let's look at an example here. It says an M&M &M is burned in a bomb calorimeter with a heat capacity of 23.3 kilojoules per K. And the temperature went up by 1.83 K. How many joules of energy are in the M&M? &M? So here Q equals C, the heat capacity, 
23.3 kilojoules per K times the change in temperature, 1.83 K. Q equals 43.6 kilojoules. Note that this is about 10.2 calories. Um, and this is kilocalories, um, but it's about 10.2 calories or 4.18 times less than it is kilojoules. So there's about 10 calories in an M&M. &M. And this is how we could actually um, figure that out. So the heat capacity, again, is used when you have a device like a calorimeter. It's made out of multiple materials. We don't want to have to measure the mass of everything. So therefore, we calibrate the calorimeter based on something that gives off a known amount of energy. And then we can figure out how many kilojoules per degree K it takes to heat up the calorimeter. So this is how this is done. Now, in the next sections, we will look at enthalpy, which is a little bit different um, than internal energy, and we will discuss its uh, thermodynamic properties. So this is a relatively short section, which just focuses on the bomb calorimeter.